Chairman, thank you. Good to see you again. I, I had a parent that was in my office today, and as you can imagine, the parents that come here to DC do a lot of research and a lot of background, and they, when they bring questions, they bring very different types of questions. Their, their particular child had a healthcare issue, and they were asking about the cost of drugs. And they went through several different proposals that are out there, but then they asked a very specific, pointed, well-educated question about pharmacy benefit managers and said, what is being done? Because that seems to be a black hole and all I'm reading and seeing seems to be a lot of information on that. Now, th that's an area I said, you're very perceptive to be able to go through the different aspects on that. You talk a lot about drug policy, but there's nothing about PBMs and some of the proposals in your budget piece. Now, CMS, we work with them directly on it. I wanna to talk to you about some of that as well. But for the PBMs in particular, they're not even mentioned once. What's the plan at this point on dealing with drug pricing in the PBMs? And Senator, thank you. And uh, it may not be as directly uh, included within the budget, but the administration is working on PBMs because we know it, it more and more there is a growing concern that the, the middlemen in the process of getting drugs from manufacturer to patient are skimming off a good deal of the money that's being generated. And what we want is for uh, consumers to get the drug at the lowest price possible. I will tell you that uh, most of these issues will likely end up in court, as you can expect. Right. But we're going to try to move to make sure that if there's a middle middleman that's going through the process of making sure a drug is getting from the manufacturer to the patient, that it's done efficiently. And so we could use your help to make well, sure Well, we'd, we'd be glad to be able to work with the administration on that. You'd find bipartisan support to be able to deal with this. Some basic elements of transparency. Obviously, PBMs are very opaque in where, yep. where the pricing is, where the money actually goes. Yep or even the standards for evaluation. Different pharmacies are evaluated different ways, different yeah. months even, where they don't even know the evaluation, the price on it. So getting some standardization. Uh, we've made those recommendations to your team. We'd love to be able to work on that. And if we need legislation to be able to fix it, let's continue to be able to work on that. If I can continue on that same theme, this issue of tiering is becoming more and more important where the drug will be released out. Uh, there's a generic drug that is in released out later in competition, but it's according to the PBMs and the main original manufacturer, it's put on a branded tier, meaning that the, the patient at the pharmacy counter is paying the more expensive rate rather than the generic rate for their uh, pharmaceutical, and it also becomes an issue for Medicare as well. That's not an issue that you brought up on this, but it's a really big issue that we need to be able to address this whole issue of tiering of where a new generic drug comes out, whether they're a branded tier or generic tier. Can you help us get to uh, try to settle this issue to lower prices? We'll follow up with you, Senator. Thank you for that. Uh, let, let me talk a little bit about something Senator Menendez brought up as well, uh, and it's this issue of the children in ORR custody uh, that have come across the border. These are the unaccompanied minors. The New York Times published this report uh, that was pretty horrific about labor, but this is not new. This is something Senator Portman and I and several others have worked on for several years, trying to be able to figure out how we can actually manage this. The, the Times actually identified uh, that there is a stat that's 85,000 children that HHS lost immediate contact with them once they were placed in sponsorship. Uh, so that's my first question. Is that number accurate? Uh, because once HHS does the vetting, places them with sponsors, the next question is, do you know where they are, even for those first 30 days? And then when you get to day 31, do we know where they are? And if I can push this a little farther, if they don't show up for their first hearing, is someone from HHS checking on them? Because at that point, they're lost. And, and Senator, I, every week, I get briefed by my team sometimes two or three times a week on this situation uh, with the unaccompanied migrant kids and where we stand. I've never heard that number of 85,000. I don't know where it comes from. Okay. And uh, so I can't attest, I, I, I would say I, it doesn't sound at all to be realistic. And what we do is we try to follow up as best we can with these kids. Uh, Congress has given us certain authorities. Our authorities essentially end the moment we have found a a suitable sponsor to place that child with. We try to do some follow-up, but neither the child or the sponsor is actually obligated to follow up with us. And, and we make every effort to follow up with them as best we can. But that is the first 30 days, uh, there's the follow-up that's actually happening there. But if they don't show up for the first hearing, there is no follow-up at that point. Is that correct? Uh, the the follow-up for purposes of the immigration proceeding would be, I believe, through the Department of Homeland Security. Okay. Well, at, at this point, no one's following up. Uh, there are some assumptions that are made there that if an unaccompanied minor has been placed in a home and then they don't show up for hearings, 
no one seems to be checking on them to be able to figure out, none, are they still at the same address they were dropped off at? What are they doing and why are they not showing up at hearings? I also understand uh, that you've called for an audit, a four-week audit in February on that. My understanding is that audit c concludes next week. Is that something that we could get a copy of that audit report as well and to be able to see next week when it's finished? Let me make sure, Senator, uh, when we have that uh, audit finished, if we're able to share publicly the results of that. I, I believe we can probably share most uh, of the information because there is most of the process that we use is public. Right. And what we're trying to do is make sure that our checks on vetting are, are catching anyone who should not be considered a suitable sponsor. And so our audit is for the purpose of making sure that our background checks are fulfilling that mission. Right, I don't know why there wouldn't be a good reason you couldn't share it with this committee. Yeah. Uh, and even if we were seeing it uh, just locked in with this committee to be able to see it and it wasn't public or released, I don't have a reason that, that audit couldn't be re released. There are issues of privacy for the children and so forth, but we'll Get make that. sure that we That's probably not kids' names in the report, yeah. but thank you. Yeah. Senator Langford, thank you uh, for bringing up the pharmaceutical benefit managers, what we all know as PBMs. We're going to be having a hearing next Thursday in this committee on specifically them. It's a result of Senator Crapo and I having had a number of conversations about it, and I want to let my colleagues have a chance to ask their questions, but this conversation will, uh, will continue, and uh, I hope colleagues, I hope every member can come next Thursday.